Yeah.
lifted. Just sing that out. The healers in the room. Let's acknowledge him this morning. Come on. The healers in the room. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. 
He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. to save mankind. Our debt paid in precious blood. It doesn't end with Christ crucified. Something moved that heavy stone. The grave was laid to waste. Death holds no power now. Hell's grip was lost, amazing grace. All sickness now must bow. The Lamb was raised in victory. The King has claimed his crown. Let us behold him, let us behold the lamb, let us behold the man with holes in his hands. This is our Savior, look at him, look at him, God our Savior, look at him, look at him, our Christ Redeemer, look at him. Yeah.
altars. Come on, could we look at him this morning when the enemy thought he could keep on him a tomb? The tomb couldn't keep him. Death couldn't hold him. Come on, could we worship him for one more minute? With your hands raised, there's resurrection power this morning. The healer's in the room. Would you believe with me? Would we partner in faith to believe that this morning is a morning of healing? One more time, let's sing this song with everything you have. I want you to partner with me in faith. God's gonna do something this morning. Healing's gonna happen this morning. Miracles and signs and wonders. Would we believe it? This Easter Sunday, Mercy Culture. Come on. because people need to hear the message of Easter this morning. We want to give a shout out to Brixton and to Patricia watching from Roswell, New Mexico. Come on, church. It's exciting. People all around the country are with us right now celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm passionate this morning. Come on, the enemy has tried to sneak up on me. He's under my feet this morning. Come on. Do you believe it this morning? Come on, church, I'm believing with you. I'm believing for your family. There is faith in this room. Look at this, faith comes by hearing. I want you to take 30 seconds and share a healing story with someone next to you. Share with them a story where either you've been healed or someone you know has been healed. Come on, usually 
we say hi not today we're gonna release healing and faith this morning turn to someone around you and share a story 30 seconds about your healing or someone you know has been healed whether it's a marriage physical healing financial healing we are releasing faith this morning come on healings in the room My name is Steve. I am one of the elders here at Mercy Culture Church where we love God, we love people, and we love mercy. Watch these announcements once you take your seats. Welcome to Mercy Culture. I'm Dario, and I serve on the Axel team. Our vision is to take people from corporate encounters with God to daily personal encounters with God. If this is your first time with us, we can't wait to meet you. Text the word NEW to 817-835-9090 so we can get to know you. For everyone who texts the word NEW, $10 will be donated to the justice reform. So just by visiting today, you are partnering with an organization that is answering the cry for justice by bringing reformation from city to city. If you'd like to learn more about our culture, how to connect with God, get plugged into the community, and begin your journey encountering God daily, MC Connect is your next step. Through MC Connect, you will learn more about what it means to become a member and enter into the covering of Mercy Culture Church. To begin, text CONNECT to 817-835-9090 or visit mercyculture.com. Here at Mercy Culture, we honor God by giving our first and our best through tithes and offerings. There are three ways you can give. Online at mercyculture.com slash give. Text GIVE to 817-835-9090. Or for physical offerings, you can use the boxes on your way out or send it by mail. Tonight is the launch of our Spanish campus. If you would like to be part of our Spanish community, come join us tonight at 6 p.m. in person only in Fort Worth at Mercy Culture Church. To have these announcements sent to you, text NEWS to 817-835-9090 or scan the QR code on the back of the seat in front of you. For more information and to stay connected, follow us on social media or visit us at mercyculture.com. Calvary Christian Academy is a school built around the presence of God. To us, spiritual development is foundational when it comes to a child's life and future. You see, our team has developed a Connect with God curriculum that guides each student at the beginning of their school day to connect with God, understand His Word, and learn to hear His voice. One student who was not even a month into attending our school had a life-changing encounter with God. In her class, she was having her connect with God time, enjoying God's presence. The next day, her parents shared that she received her heavenly language. She had a moment with God where one of his gifts of his spirit was awakened within her just by being in his presence. It is our heart to raise up our kids to hear God and have their own walk with him so they can be spiritual leaders in whatever field they go into. At CCA, our priority is to teach children to hear and obey the Holy Spirit. We want students to have a strong understanding of the Word of God and to be able to apply that knowledge to their everyday life. Our curriculum teaches from a biblical worldview. We teach math, science, social studies, government, language through a biblical lens. We teach our students to understand their world and every subject matter through what the Word of God says. We want our students to be able to be equipped and prepare to take dominion to whatever field of study or ministry the Lord has called them to. You see, the world needs something more than people filling positions. 
The world needs sons and daughters filled with His Holy Spirit to lead in all spheres of society. We believe leaders of government, education, religion, arts and entertainment, sports and media, family, business will come out of CCA. Our school is a supernatural God encounter school. Happy Resurrection Day. My name is Landon. I'm the lead senior pastor here at Mercy Culture Church. The vision of our church is to take people from corporate encounters with God to daily personal encounters with God. And you say, what does that mean? It means this, that we are passionate about God encounters and not just in a church service, but we're passionate about people encountering God every single day because it is so easy to hear God when you're in his presence. And when you're in his presence every day, he's going to speak to you when he speaks to you and you start listening, everything changes. And so we are passionate about helping people connect with God. And we do that through our membership, which we call MC Connect. But it's so much more than just a membership. It really is a discipleship mechanism to help you connect with God. So everyone who goes through membership, it starts online. It's very easy to do. And then everyone takes a spiritual gifts assessment. And we find out the best way you connect with God. One disservice we've done in the church over the years is we've tried to make everyone connect with God the same way. And everybody connects with God differently. So we want to help you figure out how you best connect with God and then give you a daily encounter plan so that you can do that on a daily basis. And I'm telling you, it is an absolute game changer when you learn how to get into the presence of God like we did corporately every single day. Amen. Online campus, we love you. We're so glad that you're here today with us. And tonight we are launching our Spanish campus. So tonight at 6 p.m. right here in the sanctuary, and then every week after that, it'll be Saturdays at 4 right here. Hey, uh, next week, we're starting a new series on supernatural warfare. It's a spiritual warfare series. And a lot of people don't realize that they are encountering the effects of witchcraft. They just call it fear, anxiety, depression. And they don't know that they're actually experiencing spiritual warfare. And so we're going to expose that and we're going to teach you how to overcome that next week. We're very excited about it. So this morning, if you want my notes, I have over 50 scriptures that I have in my notes today. And uh, my notes will be sent to you via text message. If you text the word notes to the number that comes up on the screen, we'll send that right to you. How many ready for the word this morning? John chapter three, John chapter three. It says this, Jesus replied, verily, I very, I tr truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Someone say born again. Amen. Jump down to verse nine. Nicodemus said to him, how can things, these things be? Jesus answered him, are you the teacher of Israel? And you, yet you don't understand those things. Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things, you do not believe. How can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Verse 13, no one ascended into heaven except to he who descended from heaven. So the son of man, verse 14, look at this. And Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up. This 15, verse 15 says, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. I came to tell you this morning, supernatural healing is God giving you his attention and you giving God all of yours. The title of this message this morning is Supernatural Healing. Let's pray. So Father, we thank you that you're here in this room. We love you, Lord. We praise you. Lord, I pray right now, Holy Spirit, would you breathe upon your Logos word, your written word. And I pray it becomes alive. I pray it becomes rhema right now. 
Lord, I pray right now that you would give us ears to hear, hearts to receive, minds to understand what your spirit is saying this morning. We declare no spirit, but the Holy Spirit is welcome here. We say spirit of fear, you have to go. We declare greed, you have to go. Lust, you have to go. Rebellion, you have to go. We declare right now, Holy Spirit, come. Rule and reign in this place. Father, I pray right now, I thank you that nobody came to hear me. We all came to hear you. So we say, speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Teach us about your healing. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. And amen. The Lord spoke to us at the beginning of, or the end of last year and said that 2021 was a year of the supernatural. He gave us the verse, Ephesians 3.20, he will do exceedingly abundantly beyond what we could ever ask or think according to his power that works in us. Beyond what we could ask or think is the supernatural. The supernatural is what is beyond your ability. The Lord told us that this year we would experience the supernatural. We would experience what is impossible for man. It is so big, it scares you. You don't have the resources. You don't have the power. You don't have the connections. You don't have the means, but God is going to do something incredible in your life this year. And it will be so big that only he can take the credit for it. He told us three things. One, we would experience the supernatural. Two, we would experience supernatural personal growth. And that mercy culture would experience supernatural numeric growth. So that prophetic word has come true. We've already moved to three services. This one is jam-packed, shout out in the balcony and those in the overflow. And if you don't like sitting this close to your neighbor, there's a 1.30 service that you're able to come to too. It'll probably be as packed as this. But we're already experiencing this word. So today I wanna focus on the second part of this prophetic word and it's this, supernatural personal growth. And here's what's going to happen. If you're taking notes, I want, to write, I want you to write this down. You're going to supernaturally grow in your ability to give God your attention. The Lord told me he was going to heal people today. I had a, an Easter message plan. I had it marked out for, for, for months. I knew what I was going to preach. And then the Lord spoke to me. And he, he told me, he said, I'm going to heal people. And he told me to teach on supernatural healing. So here we go, supernatural healing. Healing is curing or healing a person of infirmity, sickness, or injury through supernatural means. Healing alone is supernatural. Healing is the restoration of body, mind, and spirit to a state of wholeness or well-being. Ultimately, healing is embodied in Jesus for healing all through his death and the cross and his resurrection. Can I get an amen? Amen. Healing in the Greek is the word ielme, which means to heal or to cure. In the Greek, we get the word rapha, which means heal, repair, or restore. Now there's over 151 different verses on healing. And that doesn't count the ones that say being made whole or well-being or be made well. So the Bible is full of all of these verses and stories and accounts of supernatural healing. But what's amazing to me is how many believers don't believe in healing. I'm gonna say that again. How many believers don't believe in healing? So let me get this straight. As as a believer, you believe that a virgin was born, or to be a virgin gave birth to a sinless savior, Never seen, never knew a man, but was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. He was raised in, 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 up to 30 years old, began his ministry, uh, healed people, uh, resurrected the dead, power of God moved through him. Then he goes to the cross, dies on the sins for you and I, conquers death and hell, raises from the dead three days later, then ascends to heaven and one day is coming back for you and me. You have the faith to believe that but you don't have the faith that he b- believe he can heal your arthritis? I want to show you what the Bible says about healing. Exodus chapter 15, God calls himself a healer. 
says this in verse uh, 26, saying, if you diligently listen, thank you, if you diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God, which is right in the eyes, and give ear to his commandments and keep the statues, I will put none of the disease on you that I put on the Egyptians. Look at this. For I am the Lord, your healer. God calls himself our healer. Then Jesus' ministry begins with healing. Matthew chapter five, it says this, verse, or Matthew chapter four, verse 23, it says, and Jesus went throughout Galilee teaching in the synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease. Someone say every disease. <laughs> healing every affliction, say every, <laughs> of the people. So Jesus begins his ministry and starts healing people. Not only that, but the gift of uh, the Holy Spirit is healing. 1 Corinthians 12 says that there's many gifts. There's actually nine. Wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, power, prophecy, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, and distinguishing between the spirits. Jesus said, I'm gonna go to heaven, but don't worry, I'm gonna give you a helper. He's gonna come and bring gifts to you. The Holy Spirit came and he has these beautiful gifts for us to have. But the problem is, is somewhere, somewhere, someone taught us, gave us a bad theology that God doesn't heal anymore. But Jesus gave us his spirit with his gifts so that we can walk in healing. And not just healing, speaking in tongues and wisdom and knowledge. You saw the video of the, the, the student at CCA that just at a time with the Lord, got baptized in the Holy Ghost and got her prayer language. Amazing testimony of just encountering God. You know, our church started two years ago. It's crazy. Two years ago, we started in a high school. It was an Easter Sunday morning. I Paul, you're shaking your head. It, 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 we started on this Sunday morning. And, and this, this lady was in town for a, a business seminar at the convention center downtown. She saw a Facebook ad about our church or someone posted about it, shows up. She'd been asking the Lord for 17 years for her prayer language. She's in the middle of worship, giving God all of her attention. She gets baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaks in tongues, runs up to me afterwards and tells me no one touched me, no one prayed for me, no one did anything. I was giving my attention to God and then he started giving me his attention. I think this lady lives in Virginia. It's a beautiful thing. They flew back a year later, came to the church when we were in this building just to thank the Lord for what he did. Beautiful. Listen, God is a God that heals. Do you know that your words have the power of healing or not? I love the scripture says, Proverbs chapter 12. It says, there is one whose rash words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise bring healing. Do you know that your words are powerful? Do you know you have the ability to either partner with words of faith or partner with words of doubt? The Holy Spirit showed me a vision in my office studying this week. And the vision was at the altar, you were testifying. Pastor Steve had you do it. You begin to testify about God healing you. I, at the first service, some lady at the altar turned to me and said, uh, God healed my knee. And then I, I went on a trip and it got hurt again. And I came back to this church and God healed it again. Here's what happened. Just as you begin to testify about God healing, what happened was faith began to sweep this room. As you begin to hear the words of faith, the stories of faith about how God has touched people. Do you know that you can do that in your everyday life? Do you know you can make a decision to either partner with fear, partner with doubt, or partner with faith? The Lord really convicted me on this because all my life I have had the um, behavior or I've had the effects of what they call dyslexia, where I read things backwards and I see things backwards. Heather and I got in some funny disagreements in our earlier days of marriage because she thought I was doing it on purpose or being lazy. Until it's like she caught me in the middle saying the opposite of what I was, I was reading. And for years, I would say, I have dyslexia, I have dyslexia, I've got really bad dyslexia, and it's really hard. I've, when I wrote my books, it was just challenging to do it. And, and, and I would partner with it. And I had one of my spiritual fathers challenge me. He said, hey, stop partnering with that. I was like, oh. <laughs> He's like, let's pray for God to heal you of that right now. And let's start speaking faith. Do you know we partner with doubt and unbelief all the time? 
when we talk bad about our marriage, when we talk bad about our children, when we talk bad about health, I'm a diabetic, I'm always gonna be a diabetic, I just have to live this way. And what we do is we begin to partner. My back always hurts, it's always like this. And we begin to partner with doubt rather than partnering with fear. I wanna encourage you, when you feel something come up, or you feel pain, or something happens in life that is contrary to what God's words say, start putting the attention and focus back on God and not on your pain, amen? amen. Biblically speaking, God heals the land. Second Chronicles 7, 14 says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. As I was praying in my office this week, I heard in my spirit, your land will produce. Specifically, I felt oil and gas will produce. I don't know who that's for. Three elements of, of healing. Three elements of healing, to partner with healing. Number one, faith partners with healing. Luke chapter eight, verse 47 says, then the woman seeing that she could not escape noticed and came trembling and fell down before him, Jesus. In the presence of all the people, she explained why she had touched him. And she showed him that immediately she had been healed. Someone say immediately. And then Jesus said to her daughter, look at this, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Scripture teaches us that this was a woman with an issue of blood that could not stop the flow of blood for 12 years. This destroyed her life. Now remember, in, in the Jewish days here, if a woman was bleeding, she was considered unclean. So not only is this an intense physical battle to go through, it ruins her social, economic, and spiritual life. Because now she is not able to interact with the people that she once could or loved. She's an outcast for, from society because she has this issue. And scripture says, it goes on and you can read in other gospels, for 12 years she has this and she went to every doctor and physician she could to try to find someone to heal her, but no one was able to. Isn't it interesting how we always go to other things before we go to God? Isn't it amazing how we go to doctors or go to medicine or look to other sources before we look to God? It doesn't have to take 12 years before you turn to Jesus. What I love about this situation is she just knew that she had to get into his presence. Y'all, something powerful happens when you're in the presence of God. Jesus didn't even touch her. He didn't pray for her. He didn't even speak to her. She got in his presence and just put her attention on him. And the power of God left him and she was healed. Let me give you some practical advice today. What do you do when you don't know what to do? Here's what you do. You ask the Holy Spirit. It's amazing how many people go to their pastor or go to some other spiritual leader and ask them what they should do instead of asking God. Let me tell you, as a pastor, I've been pastoring this church for over two years now. I got about 20 years of ministry or 18 years of ministry before that. And over and over and over, I've been in scenarios and situations where I don't know what to do. And so when I don't know what to do, I just ask God. I was in a situation like that recently. There's a young man that is a part of this church and a member of our church, an amazing young man. But since he was a child, he struggled with depression and suicidal thoughts. This same demonic spirit that's attacked him has also attacked other members of his family. And as a child, he tried to suppress it and tried to ignore it. And he was in other churches that they would tell him to get over it, be stronger, have more faith. It's always easy for someone else to tell you to have more faith when they're not going through what you're going through. 
And, and, and it kept getting worse and worse and worse. And, and we were doing everything that we can to help him and, and inner healing and prayer and, and get the intercessors and, and counseling as much as we can do. And it came to a point where there was this incident that took place. And, 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 and I, I left the church one Sunday and I just said to the Lord, Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to help him. This is how your pastor prays for you behind your back. <laughs> I don't know how to help him. And the Holy Spirit said, just love him. I was like, I could do that. Wait, wait, wait. You mean I don't have to come up with the answers? You mean I don't have to have the solutions? You mean I don't have to be the smartest person in the room? You mean I don't have to be the most spiritual person on the planet? You mean the only thing I have to do is stand in faith and love him? I couldn't believe it was so simple. I was like, I could do that. A month later, he's in this sanctuary by himself worshiping has a God encounter. He literally tells a story. He came out of his body, saw God, saw himself. Holy Spirit came and ministered, touched to him, delivered him instantaneously in the moment. No pastors, no intercessors, no prayer team, just a young man, watch, giving his attention to God. When you don't know what to do, just ask the Lord, because he always knows what to do. Hmm. Number two, element of forgiveness. El second element of, of healing, forgiveness. Proverbs 4.23 says, above all else, guard your heart. For everything, or another translation says, life flows from it. Hmm. As Heather and I have traveled the nation in conferences and different events ministering to people, I cannot tell you how many times I have gone to pray for someone for healing. And as soon as I go to pray for them, I feel like I ran into a brick wall. Literally a brick wall. I mean, it just dies right there. And the moment I felt that over and over and over, more times than I can count, the Lord has told me they need to forgive. Do you know that forgiveness releases healing? And so many people can't figure out why they're stuck where they're at spiritually. And they feel like they've hit a brick wall and you can't move past this place. Why are other people getting saved and, and, and God's doing these things in their life and it feels like they're growing so fast spiritually and I feel like I'm not. I would encourage you to examine your heart and see if there's an area in your life where you have not forgiven. Here's what we say at Mercy Culture. If the place that you stop forgiving is the place you stop spiritually growing. We say forgiveness isn't optional because if you're going to follow Jesus and his teaching, forgiveness is required. Look what Matthew 18, look what Peter said to Jesus. He said, Lord, how many times was, was, must we forgive one, our, our brother who sins against us? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not just seven times, but 77 times. Verse 32 says this. He goes on and tells the parable of the wicked and lazy servant or the, the wicked servant that won't forgive. Says this in verse 32. Then the master summoned him and declared, you wicked servant, I forgave you of all of your debts because you begged me. Shouldn't you have had mercy, someone say mercy, on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should repay, repay what he owed. Verse 35, that is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brothers from your heart. Forgiveness is not optional for Christ followers. Here's where we have a hard time getting through is we say stuff like, ah, but they don't deserve it. And here's the truth, neither do we. <laughs> what did you do to deserve mercy? And you can't even give an answer for that because mercy actually is defined by undeserved kindness. You on your best day are not good enough to receive his mercy. But the beautiful thing is on your worst day, his best day still overshadows you. Listen, there's nothing we do to earn his love and forgiveness. 
And it doesn't matter who has sinned against us. Like the disciples said, how many times do we have to put up with this? Now that doesn't mean you don't have boundaries in your life. Can I get an amen? amen. But what it does mean is we're always required to forgive. In fact, when you go through MC Connect and you get your daily discipleship plan, we teach you how to encounter God every day through the Lord's Prayer. Every single day, God's Word teaches us to forgive. It says, forgive us of our sins or our debts as we forgive our debtors or those that have sinned against us. Do you know every single day, forgiveness is what helps you enter the presence of God or will keep you from the presence of God? And that's why you stop spiritually growing where you don't forgive is because it hinders you from coming into that intimacy or that daily encounter. Church, this is so important. And here's the thing is we are so good at tricking ourselves because we said a prayer one time to forgive someone, but we didn't do it in our heart. And then time goes by and we realize that we have not truly in our heart forgiven. You know, when you tell someone, hey, I think you need to forgive. And they're like, I already forgave them of that. <laughs> like, sounds like it. <laughs> Come on, be real. You know what I'm, what I'm talking about when, when, when you're, you know, just living life and all of a sudden you think of that person and you get angry again? And you weren't angry 10 seconds ago, but as soon as you thought of them, you're angry? Like, how do you know if you haven't forgiven? Because you're walking around tense. Now, here's the thing. Forgiveness is not a one-time thing. So, the enemy will tell you, oh, you already did that. It's okay. Keep your hard heart and stay in bitterness. You know, there's some people that I have I've had to forgive every single day for years. And then one day I'm on the Trinity Trail praying. All of a sudden I go to forgive them and it's gone. I'm like, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Am I okay? Something wrong with me? Where'd it go? And about a month later it comes back. I'm like, oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Forgive him again, forgive him again, forgive him again. Here's what you're doing. It's like David who prayed this prayer. He said, Lord, search my heart. Show me the areas that I haven't seen. Show me what I've hidden from myself. Lord, more than anything, I desire to be like you. Do you know that you are never more like Jesus than when you're forgiving? Forgiveness is so powerful. And forgiveness brings healing. Number three, oh, I, I, I was praying this week and I heard in my spirit for somebody, call them. There's somebody that's been going back and forth about calling someone that your relationship has been strained. I heard in my spirit, call them, whoever that's for. Number three, third element of healing is repentance. James five, it says, and the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Look at this. Therefore, confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. There's a lot of people that say stuff like, well, my sin is between me and God. And yes, it is between you and God, but there's other people involved. And scripture tells us that when we confess our sin, it brings healing to us. We did a message on marriages a couple weeks ago, and we encouraged marriages that had things that they were hiding from each other to confess your sin to one another. I got so many messages from husbands and wives that confessed some heavy things to one another and how God healed their marriages and brought their hearts together. Here's how the enemy deceives you. He thinks that if you keep it hidden, then your marriage won't fall apart. But the problem is, is the hidden sin is what's tearing your marriage apart. And when you bring it to the Lord, and when you confess your sin, God brings healing to one another. It is so powerful when we learn how to confess our sin to one another. Now watch this. We have faith we have forgiveness, and we have repentance. These are elements of healing. These produce healing. But at the same time that 
faith, forgiveness, and repentance produce healing, so does doubt, unforgiveness, and pride resist healing. The opposite of those three attributes are what will resist healing in your life. Pride sounds like I don't need to go down to that altar. Lord can heal me right where I'm at. He can, but the Holy Spirit prompted your heart to come down. So whatever the Holy Spirit prompts you to do, I would do. Because we're not the healer. The person praying for you is not the healer. Healer, The Holy Spirit's the healer. And we got to obey him. Listen, when there's pride, it's going to resist God healing you. Where there's unforgiveness, you will resist healing. And when there's doubt, it will resist healing. I felt in my spirit that I was supposed to share some faith stories with you to begin to build up your faith. Speaking of pride, there was a great king named Naaman in 2 Kings chapter five. And his servant convinces him to go to the prophet to get healed, prophet Elijah. And the prophet Elijah says, I'm not even gonna meet with you. I'm not gonna pray for you. I'm not gonna lay hands on you. It's all I want you to do is go dip in the Jordan River seven times and you're gonna be healed. And the king went away furious because he thought he was given a task that was lower than him. And his servant had to go to him and said, sir, if he would have told you to do something great, would you have done it? How easy it is to just dip in the Jordan seven times. So he goes and he dips in the Jordan seven times. And when he came out, he was completely healed of leprosy, watch, and pride. It's amazing what will happen when you will engage God in your humility. I like the story of in 1 Kings chapter 17. It was a widow woman. This widow woman had served the prophet Elijah. And then after she served the prophet Elijah, her son died. And she came back to him and put a demand on the anointing of God on his life. I love this story. He went up into the room with the little boy. He laid on him. And as he laid on him, the spirit of God went through him into the boy. And the boy got up that very moment. I love this story in Matthew chapter 9. That there was a paralyzed man with some awesome friends. And, and Jesus was in this house ministering. And there was a lot of people like there is to today, but there were so many people that there was no more overflow left and he actually could not even get in the building. So his four friends climbed the roof, dug a hole in the roof and lowered him down. The greatest illustration sermon Jesus ever preached. He's in the middle of preaching and homeboy is being held down in front of him. Jesus doesn't even have an option at that point. <laughs> Heals the man on the spot. How many know that you need some good friends that will fight for your healing even when you've given up? Come on, some friends that say, we're going to say over you, cancer, go and never come back. We're going to say over you that by his stripes you are healed. That will stand in the gap for you. Ah. Love the story. The paralyzed man. In John chapter five, he's staying in front of this pool. Scripture says that for 38 years, he was paralyzed in hopes that when an angel stirred the water, that he would be the first one in and get healed. And he never got his healing. He didn't have good friends to help him. And Jesus comes to him and meets him. And says, do you want to be well? And he's sitting there having a conversation with Jesus while his attention is on a dumb pool. Watch what, but, but watch this spiritual fight for your attention. How many times does your attention get put on holy water or oil or this or that or this thing? And if you just had these right elements then you can be healed when is all you need is Jesus and nothing. His attention was so on his bad theology that he has Jesus with him and he's still believing for a pool. Jesus had asked him, do you want to get well? It's almost an insulting question. 
But why did he, because he had to shake him out of his disposition. What has stolen your attention off only Jesus? Hmm. When Jesus is in the room, it's all you need. Love the story in John chapter 9. It says this. Jesus spit on the ground and then he made mud with his saliva and he put it in the man's eyes and told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. I love this story. Jesus meets a man who's blind and then spits in his face. <laughs> Has anyone ever seen those forensic file shows? When Heather and I got married, it took a toll on our marriage. We watched those every night <laughs> for about five years. And it got to the point where we're laying in bed and we're like, if I was going to kill you, what I would do is I would burn you alive. <laughs> and I would just destroy the crime scene. It'd be impossible for them to figure it out. Heather's like, no, 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 no. They would see the, the fire accelerant. You know, that war. What I'd do is I'd chop your body into pieces and I'd feed half of you to pigs and half of you to alligators. And they couldn't find any of you and there's nothing to even investigate. Like, babe, you're so smart. <laughs> we went through inner healing and we're okay after that. But, but it's amazing in these crime shows that someone would be incarcerated or somebody would be free for decades and then they would find one strand of DNA. Watch this. Jesus spit and he took his DNA and he put it where the man's dysfunctional DNA was. Watch, and he took the culture of heaven and he put it into the man's dysfunctional culture. Do you know that there is no sickness in heaven? Do you know that there's no disease in heaven? There's no pain in heaven. Revelations 21 says it's free from all of that. So he takes the culture of heaven and puts it in the man's eyes. Do you know that healing is normal for God? It's amazing that everywhere Jesus went, it looks like he healed on the Sabbath. Read all throughout the Gospels. He's constantly healing on the Sabbath. And the Pharisees would get all mad and, and the, he can't be doing that. Like, how, how could he be doing that on the Sabbath when they never healed ever? And they said, whoa, whoa, whoa. You can't work on the Sabbath. You know why Jesus always healed on the Sabbath? Because work isn't, healing isn't work for him. Healing is easy for him. And watch this. Healing should be easy for us because it's not us doing it. I came to tell you today that God heals. Mm. So how about the question, what happens if it doesn't happen? What about if I believe and it doesn't happen? Heather and I got married young, probably too young. I was 22, she was 20. If Peyton asks, we were 30 and 32. <laughs> <laughs> and because we were so young, we waited a while to have kids and then we went to start having kids and we were having some hard times, some, some troubles. And I remember when Heather was finally pregnant, it was about eight years into marriage. And we're so excited and we're going to the doctor's visits and getting, you know, mom and grandma and all, all, all that stuff. And, and we, we go in and we're very excited and we go and we get the first ultrasound and you see the little heartbeat, you know, it's like just a little pee. And we go back for the follow-up visit in two weeks and the doctor said, I, I, I'm so sorry, there's no heartbeat. And we said, no, no, we were, we were just in here two weeks ago. We were, we were just in here. The heartbeat's there, the baby's growing. He said, no, I'm sorry, the baby's not growing. And Heather and I said, no, 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 we're, we're, we're going to believe for this. And he said, okay, we'll, we'll come back in a week. So we fasted and we prayed and we stood and we believed and we came back a week later and he said, I'm sorry, there's no heartbeat. And I remember being in the doctor's office with Heather. And I remember thinking, you might not have this opportunity in life ever again. That in the middle of pain and disappointment, 
that we could still give him all of our attention. Scripture calls it a sacrifice of praise. That a praise a week ago was a lot easier than the praise today. But I may never have the opportunity to praise him in the place that I am in today. And despite being disappointed, I can still give him all of my attention. Watch, your praise and worship and disappointment is supernatural. Because you can't do it in your own ability. I love Daniel chapter 3. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're about to be thrown into the fiery furnace. And the king says, any last words? And they respond, king, we want you to know our God is able to rescue us from your hand. But even if he doesn't, we want you to know that he's still God. What you're saying is, even if I'm not healed today, I want you to know, God, that I'm still going to love you. I'm still going to praise you. And you're still able. Ah. Uh, the common denominator after everyone has received a healing in all the texts I just read is that after someone receives a healing, watch this, God has their attention. John chapter three, our text that we started out with Worship team, you could come and join me. Nicodemus, a priest, is having a conversation with Jesus. Beginning in verse 14, Jesus said this, and as Moses was lifted up, the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. Jesus is talking with a priest named Nicodemus. Nicodemus met Jesus in the night because he was too embarrassed to be seen with Jesus in the day. So he's approaching Jesus and trying to understand where does this power come from? Because Jesus is rocking his theology. Because everything he thought, Jesus is contradicting, but he sees the presence of God. He can't deny the power that's on Jesus. And Jesus begins to tell him, you must be born again. This is where he says, how do I enter my mom again if I'm born? And, and Jesus is speaking spiritually to him and he's not understanding. Then Jesus tells him this. He says, like Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up. In Numbers chapter 21 Children of Israel are grumbling and complaining. God rescues them out of severe bondage and slavery. And there's not thanksgiving. There's not appreciation. There's not worship. There's complaining, grumbling, and rebellion. The Bible says that God allowed snakes to enter the camp. And the snakes begin to bite the Israelites. And they started freaking out. They said, Moses, we're so sorry. We've, we're sinning. We've allowed sin into the camp. And, and would you do something? Would you help us? Would you save us? So God instructed Moses to make a bronze statue of a snake and put it on a pole. And to stick it up in the camp. And anyone who was bitten by one of these poisonous snakes is all they had to do was look at this bronze serpent. And when they looked at this bronze serpent, they were healed. Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus and he said, just like that, I must be lifted up. See that snake that slithered in the camp wasn't the first snake to bite because there was one slithering in the garden and it came and bit Adam and Eve. It came with that bite of sin, that deception of sin. It came to break the unity, the relationship between God and man. And that same sin, that same serpent has been biting man ever since. In fact, God warned us that it would continue to strike at our heel. It would continue to try to bite you. And what it does is the, the, the venom of that serpent is sin. 
sin is the sickness of our soul. And it's amazing what happens when you engage in sin, even if you're close to God or far from God, what happens is, is that sin begins to demand your attention. And then you're so focused on your sin. You're so focused on your mistakes. You're so focused on your pain. You're so focused on your past. Isn't it interesting how the enemy is always reminding you of your past? Isn't it interesting how he always reminds you of the mistakes you made 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago? I bet you some of you are coming to church today and the enemy, that liar and deceiver, try to talk to you out of coming, try to tell you how bad you are, try to tell you because of your divorce, because of your mistake, because of your past life, that you should shouldn't be in the church. You should be in the house of God. He always comes with his shame. He always comes with his attacks. He always comes with his lies. And he always comes to demand our attention. Jesus said, just like the serpent, it had to be lifted up. Watch this. And he said the people had to give the bronze serpent their attention. He said, so must the son of man be lifted up and mankind must put their attention on him. Why a bronze serpent? Because his feet, we sang about this morning, were made of bronze. Jesus became sin. Scripture says he became our sin. Watch this. He said, everybody look. Put your attention on the serpent. Focus on the sin. And as you're focusing on the sin, Jesus then took upon himself your sin. So when you're looking at your sin, you're not actually looking at your mistakes. You're looking at his mercy. He said, I'm going to put it on me and I'm going to wear it like it's mine. So when you go and try to look at your past, you just see me. When you try to look at the darkest moment in your life, you just see me. When the enemy tries to remind you of how bad you were, you just tell him, how good he is. I was in my office this week and I didn't know what to preach. I went and wrote on my board, Holy Spirit, what do you want to tell your people? And all of a sudden, he reminded me of a moment in Mercy Culture Church, one of the first few services where there was this spirit trying to distract. I said from the pulpit, the worst thing that you can do is try to bring attention onto yourself. The best thing you can do is put all of your attention onto him. Sin and sickness try to steal your attention. So you're only thinking about either your mistakes or your pain. And I came to tell you today, supernatural healing is when you give God all of your attention and he gives you all of his. Even in Matthew 27, when Jesus is being crucified, he's right next to a Roman road. And everybody who's around, all of the passerbys can see him high and lifted up. You say, how do I experience healing? You lift Jesus above your sickness. You take your attention off your sickness, your shame, your past, and your pain. And you put it on him. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes all over this place? Sin is the sickness of the soul. And God is so loving. 
He's so merciful that not only does he heal our bodies, but he heals our souls. He saves our souls. Scripture says that if we believe and we confess that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. Even a thief on the cross was able to look over and put his attention on Jesus and receive salvation. We are going to enter into the elements of healing right now. And we're going to start with repentance. With every head bowed and eye closed today, if you say, Landon, I need forgiveness of sin. The snake of sin has bit me. There's areas in my life that are not godly, that are not holy, that are not right. And I need a savior. I need Jesus' forgiveness. I need him to bring me back in right standing with God. Today, if you died and you don't know if you would go to heaven or hell or not, but scripture teaches us that one day all of us will spend eternity in one place and good people don't go to heaven, saved people go to heaven. And it's only by the blood of Jesus, Jesus who conquered death and conquered hell for your sins and mine. And it's the greatest gift, it's the easiest gift, it's free. The cost is only faith. This morning, if you would say, I need forgiveness of my sin. I need Jesus to save me. I want to be right with God. With every head bowed and every eye closed, just lift your hand right where you're at. Just lift your hand right where you're at. Awesome, awesome. Hands everywhere. Just leave your hand up. Leave your hand up. Come on, just let faith fill the room right now. Just let faith fill the room right now. Lift your hand high. Lift it high. Beautiful. You know who sees your hand? God sees your hand. God sees your hand. He doesn't just see your hand. He sees your heart. He sees you, son. He sees you, daughter. He sees you. Right now, put your attention on him. Right now, put your focus on him. Don't worry about who's next to you, who's around you. No one's looking around. Everybody's putting their attention on the Lord. Come on, if that's you, lift your hand. Don't wait. Don't let a day go by. The Bible says tomorrow's not promised to nobody. If that's you, lift your hand high and say, Lord, I want you to not just see my hand, see my heart all over this place. Church, can we pray with all of our heart, every single one of us, can we pray and believe in faith? Say, Lord Jesus, save me of my sin. I ask for forgiveness. I ask for mercy. Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. You died for my sins so I could have life. Holy Spirit, help me. I invite you into all of my life. I give you all of my life. If you want to say a crazy prayer, say, speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Hundreds of people, come on. Next thing we're going to do we're going to forgive. Come on, bow your head, close your eyes. This is you and the Lord right now. Who do you need to forgive? Who do you need to forgive? Who have you been withholding forgiveness? When you think of them, you cringe, you get upset, you get mad, you get angry. And I would encourage you right now, no matter what, it's not that they deserve it. It's that God forgave you. Jesus died for your sins so that you can forgive in this moment. Whoever needs to forgive. Right where you're at, just say their name, just whisper their name. Right where they're at, just whisper their name. Whoever you need to forgive. Do it right now. Do it. I release them. I release them. Come on. I release my father. I release my brother. I forgive my family member. I forgive my sibling. I forgive that pastor. I forgive my son, my daughter, whoever it is right now. I'm telling you, as you release this right now, you're going to see supernatural healing begin to flood this place, all over this place, right where you're at. Release them. Jesus, you freely forgave us.
So right now, we freely forgive. The third element is faith. And before we ask God to heal people in this room, would you stand to your feet and lift your hands all over this place and would you just begin to give them your attention? Would you begin to give them your attention? Would you begin to give them your attention right now? Come on, hands lifted as high as they can. Father, we give you all of our attention. Holy Spirit, we say have your way in this place. Even now, even before we begin to ask him, he's healing people right now. He's healing bodies right now. He's healing minds right now. He's healing people right now. I heard in my spirit that cancer is being healed. I heard in my spirit church hurt is being healed. I heard my spirit wombs are being healed. I heard in my spirit tormenting spirits that have tormented your mind with the spirit of death is being healed. I heard the land is being healed. Marriages are being hurt, healed. I heard you will sleep well. You will sleep well. People that haven't been able to sleep are going to be healed in the presence of God. Come on, for 30 more seconds, give them all of your attention, all of your focus. Now just ask him to heal you all over this place, whatever it is, whatever it is, ask him to heal you. Ask him out loud, out loud, so your own two ears can hear it. Just say it out loud, whatever it is, just ask him. If it's your back, if it's your kidneys, whatever it is, ask him right now, Father, would you heal me? Would you heal me? Would you heal me? Ask the healer right now, in the spirit of repentance, in the spirit right now of faith, in the spirit of forgiveness. Father, would you do what only you can do? Would you heal your sons and daughters? Lord, you said you would heal today. Would you do what you said you would do? Online campus, lift your hands high and home. I call you healer. Your name is healer. You have been healer to me. One more time. I call you healer. Your name is healer. You have been healer to me. Prayer team, come down, sing one more jazz. All over this place if you want someone to partner with you in prayer get out of your seat right now and just come and ask one of these people to pray for you right now if you want someone to partner with you in prayer for healing just make your way down as fast as you can don't wait don't hesitate just come fast these ministers and pastors that are full of faith are gonna pray for you father I pray right now this is the year of supernatural healing I declare exceedingly abundantly beyond what we could ask or think come on pray online campus I declare that you will do what is impossible for us to do father we declare Jesus we lift you high we put all of our attention all of our focus on you we say Jesus you are the healer in Jesus money name
moment here. If you're up here at the altar for prayer, I want you to wait up here. God's presence is here. We are releasing service here, but if you're up here, stay up here. God's presence is here. No one's going anywhere. We are going to pray with every single person here this morning. This is a significant moment here. Don't lose this moment. Mercy Culture, we are moving to three services now. Next Sunday, you have three options. We have 8.30, 11 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. We are growing so much. It's exciting what God is doing here. If you look around, we are in the midst of a miracle here and we are growing here. Next Sunday, you have three options. Mercy Culture, you guys are incredible and you always give. Three ways you can do so is writing a check. We have black boxes all around the sanctuary and even out there if you write a check you can always leave it in there you can do it online as well and or sending a message with the amounts at the number on the screen here all right with that said everyone with your hands raised i am going to bless you and say this with me lord teach us your ways that we may know you and find favor Mercy Culture, we love you so much. Don't forget, tonight is our Mercy Culture Espanol launch at 6 p.m. You are more than invited to come. Vamos a estar aquí a las 6 de la noche, celebrando el servicio en español. I speak Spanish. It's a miracle I do. I also stutter in Spanish. Mercy Culture, we love you. If you are here at the altar, stay here. God's presence is here. We'll see you as we make room for the 1.30 p.m. service. We love you so much. We want to hear about how God is moving in your life. For more information and to stay connected, follow us on social media or visit mercyculture.com.